working with the, working with Bongino. I happen to have met him, and I know that he is he is the same in real life as he is intense. Uh, and and wonderfully authentic. What's what was it like working with Bongino? It was really really fun. And the reason I thought about it was I thought here's a guy who was an NYPD officer. Here's a guy who was a Secret Service agent. So we're making a film, Police State. It's something that this guy knows about. And I wanted to have guys who are um, describing the police state from a position of knowledge, like Kyle Serafin. Kyle Serafin, FBI agent, and actually knows the FBI procedures in and out. Knows what motivates people inside the FBI. That's really important. Also knows, by the way, that this isn't all about the FBI. When people say, Dinesh, is a film about the FBI, the DHS, the Department of Homeland Security, is 20 times bigger than the FBI. And in fact, a lot of the censorship, in fact, a lot of the political targeting is coming out of DHS. We don't see it there because the only DHS we see is like the TSA agent. Mm -hmm. So we think that's DHS. That's only one part of DHS. So the film unravels a lot. I think it's important for people to sort of understand this police state because people have theories about it that aren't always quite right. Our police state has a private and a public sector dimension both. Um, and um, and our police state is, is has unique elements that you don't find in other police states. So the film goes into all this, I think, in a very stimulating way, uh, but also an emotionally riveting way. Now, I have a theory also that at some point the police state or the administrative state attains a certain critical mass where there is no going back. When you talk about all of these people like DHS being huge, bigger than FBI, bigger than CIA, you have all of these entities whose existence depends on the government as we, we've talked about earlier. So they got a, it's a make work project. But on the flip side also, in order to solve the problem, you got to convince all these people to go into the private sector and they'll be better off than sucking at the government teats. And I don't think you can do that at a given point in time. And that's where you get sort of the, what I believe is the capture that we're witnessing in Canada, everything dependent on the government and no one is free to break free of the shackles of the government. Yeah. And one of the themes, I'm glad you mentioned Canada because one of the themes we touch on, we not in depth, but I wanted to go beyond police state because, and I raised the issue that I call police planet. Why? Because I noticed in COVID, it's happening in Canada, it's happening in New Zealand, in Australia, in Europe. And there are also eerie parallels with other countries. I mean, if you looked at the January 6th event and compared it to what happened, for example, in the Brazilian election, there's almost a eerie similarity. And so I realized that you've got certain forces that are collaborating on the international front, sometimes through international agencies, sometimes not, in ways that we don't even think about. I mean, think, for example, about how do you get somebody from deep in the bowels of Central and South America to show up at the exact designated spot on the Mexican border? How do you get that guy there? He's traveled 1,500 miles. Through, which are, through, through multiple countries. Multiple countries. Uh, presumably, uh, I don't say financed on the one hand, but but fed. Well, I mean, exactly. There's got to be an infrastructure of health, an infrastructure of mobility, an infrastructure of food. And, and it turns out that there is. And it turns out that there are people providing maps. There are people telling you where to go. There are people telling you how to get around places that you don't want to be. There are people who tell you what to say to the Border Patrol agent when they ask you, like, I'm seeking asylum. No, I'm not a poor guy looking for a better life. I am fleeing persecution. You know, in other words, you are being coached by by people whose job it is to get you through. Uh, and so I'm not even, you know, there are some people I was, we talked a little bit about Ann Coulter and she's railing about the, you know, the people coming are illegals and so on. And I go, well, yeah, but here's the problem. What do you do? Can you really blame the illegal when you've got a Biden administration that is putting out the word across Central and South America that, that essentially there's an open invitation? The border is porous. The, the border is porous. Enforcement of the law is virtually non-existent. And even, I say, an, an impoverished life in America is probably still better than the average life in many of the countries from which people are coming. That's assuming that there are only economically motivated actors. If they are uh, ill-intentioned actors, then it doesn't matter if the life is of lesser quality here. They've got a, a longer term mission, which people should be concerned with. Not to mention the fact that now, of course, with the Hamas attacks, you have to ask, ask the question of your Hamas. Wouldn't you say, I, you know, it's going to be really hard to get a thousand guys into Israel. You've got border checkpoints. You've got, uh, you know, all the Israeli intelligence agencies. You've got the Israeli army patrolling the small country, particularly at the border. Why don't we try to get at least that many people into the United States? And if they did, how hard would that be? 
uh, surely not all the guys that they would send would be on a terror list where they could easily be apprehended. Well, Lots of people are going to get through. Presumably, they have already gotten through. And, and the fact that the Biden administration doesn't say, all right, let's now close the border, shows you the, the priority and the importance that there is for them to keep that border open. They don't care if it empowers the cartels. They don't care if there's massive child trafficking. They don't care if Hamas is coming through. I think that to them is the key uh, to long-term political success in the United States. Well, that, that it, it ensures another generation of votes. I say like in Canada, they're doing the same thing just a little bit different. You know, they want to double the population of Canada by the end of the century because if you can't convince people to vote for you, you can import the next generation of voters. That and I also think that there is power to be derived from the chaos that is caused from the destruction. So the more crime, well, we better disarm the law-abiding citizens because that'll somehow resolve the problem of crimes committed with unlawful procured firearms. No, there's, there's, um, there's I mean, power this, to be gained from the madness. This is the 21st century police state.